60 million years ago, the Taurus mountain chain in the Anatolian plateau was raised as the Earth's crust rippled and folded. This resulted in eruptions from three active volcanoes in the area, which were Mount Ergiez, Mount Hassan and Mount Gulu. The volcanic eruptions dispersed enormous quantities of ash and lava. These, cemented by geological sedimentation, formed a rocky plateau of pumice stone and basalt. The soft pumice on the surface was then eroded by wind, ice and water, creating deep clefts which were then further changed by wind erosion and shaped into rock pinnacles. The stronger and more resilient volcanic basalt was also affected by the attrition of both wind and water and created shapes on the tops of the pinnacles that looked like hats. Over time, the surface of the land was further eroded to create deep valleys. Cappadocia is one of those rare regions in the world where the works of man blend unobtrusively into the natural surroundings. Dwellings have been hewn from the rocks for nine or 10,000 years. During Byzantian times, settlements, churches and chapels, and most interestingly, underground cities were hollowed out of the rock. All of this being the more remarkable for having been done by hand. Over thousands of years, man created a great civilization, a perfect gift from nature and man to Anatolia. The region between the cities of Nevshehir Nide, Aksarai, and Kayseri is known as Cappadocia. This name was given by the Persians who called it Cappadocia, which means the country of nice horses. Welcome to the country of nice horses. Our first stop is the most developed tourist center in the Cappadocia region, Urguk. There are lots of well-equipped hotels and guest houses in the town. Some of the houses that were either carved out of the rock face or were originally caves colonized by man are still used today as discos, wine bars and restaurants. The buildings, which are made of blocks of local pink and beige pumice stone, are the characteristic dwellings of the region. With their flat roofs, these houses are always cool in summer but warm in winter. Today, the population of Urgup is 7,000. In the 16th century, there were 70 mosques, five churches, and 11 libraries in the town. Unfortunately, nothing remains of them today.
Cappadocia region is a centre of unusual natural beauty. In the region, many myths about the fairy chimneys have been created and told over the years. If you take the road to Nevsha here, you can see Mount Ergiez and three typical examples of fairy chimneys. After Urgup, our next stop is Gerame, with dwellings built among the ancient pumice stone pinnacles. Gerame is an interesting valley where you can see both natural beauty and history together. Compared with other places, the history of the region has a much greater effect on us. From the 7th century, the area was exposed to great threat and the people tried every way to defend themselves. The Open Air Museum in Gurame is a monastic complex of rock churches and chapels covered with frescoes. It is possible to see the historical development and the architecture of the churches belonging to the period from the 7th to the 12th centuries. Christians and monks turned the area into a place of refuge, setting up their hideouts inside the pumice stone pinnacles and were thus camouflaged and easily defended. The artists of that time created the Cappadocian style, which later inspired the stylistic features seen in many large towns. Whilst looking at the frescoes, it is easy to recall the work of Marc Chagall, one of the most important artists of the 20th century, and feel saddened because even though the Gurame region is famous for its history and natural beauty, it has not been known for its art. When strolling in the gallery, you'll be astounded by its construction and historic background. Apart from Gurame's natural beauty and history, the valley will fascinate you with its abundance of water and vegetation, and there is an appealing sense of peace and tranquility about the area. Avanos is the most forested district of the region. Its terrain is watered by the longest river in Turkey, the Kazilermak. Avanos is famous for its pottery and there are about 300 potter's workshops in the area. If you want, try the experience of sitting in front of the simple pedal lathe and try shaping the mud mixture of clay into your own pot. Of course, it's better to buy a pot made by the masters as this is the only place where you can find both the best and the cheapest.
Chabushin is a small, interesting village that lies two kilometers from Gurame along the road to Avanos. After an earthquake in the 1950s, the present village was rebuilt on the plain. The ancient settlement can still be seen in the large blocks of pumice stone. There are two important churches, the Basilica of St. John and the Church of Nicephorus Phocas, both of which are open to visitors. Passing Chavashin on the way to Avanos, we meet the old town of Zelve, which was built by hewing out the rock on either side of the valley. After the Greeks returned to Greece in 1924, the Turks settled here. The cave houses were inhabited until 1952. Zelve Open Air Museum is also a place like Gurame, which is not to be missed. In the museum, there are 15 churches, including the Church of the Grape and the Church of the Deer. that was spreading across eastern Turkey also reached Zelve. The retreating monks built their churches by digging into the rock of the valley walls. Due to the restrictions imposed on religious art during the iconoclast period, the symbols mainly used were fish, cockerels, grapes and geometric designs. This is most evident in the churches of Zelve. After the end of the iconoclast period, artists stopped using symbols and were able instead to paint religious events and portraits into the frescoes.
we come to Pashabar. The valley is in fact quite small, but it's like a museum in which we can follow the geological development of the chimneys. Some are yet to be formed, some are complete, and others have already passed their maturity and are starting to deteriorate. Here in the valley are examples of pinnacles that have formed with two or three caps. This one, in the very centre of the valley, is known as the cell of St Simeon. We are now at the largest fairy chimney of the region, Uchisar. Uchisar, 10 kilometers from Nevshahir, is a natural fortress and it takes its name from its appearance. As a fortress, Uchisar was first used by the Hittites. The Byzantians also used the fortress to defend themselves from Arab raids. The 35 metre high fortress has been restored. Inside the fortress is a small collection of shops and if you climb the steps to the top you have a panoramic view of the volcanic valleys of Cappadocia. You can see for miles and miles. It's spectacular. In Uchisar, many of the dwellings characteristic to the area have been turned into guest houses. While staying here, you can experience the wonders of this amazing area, look around and also admire the camels which are an integral part of life in this region. From Uchisar, there are three roads connecting Nevshahir to Ergut. If you take the shortest route from Ergut to Uchisar, you will encounter an interesting valley, the Valley of Dovecoats. These dovecoats have been carved into the rock pinnacles and high valley sides. Here, there are also churches hewn out of the rock, but erosion has undermined solid footing and so they are not open to the public.
We are now in the Devrent Valley, also known as the Pink Valley, where the weather has eroded the stone into peaks, cones and extremely interesting formations. The valley is ideal for wandering around and letting your mind go free. In the different rock formations, you will see a gallery of prehistoric animals. Imagine the time when the dinosaurs roamed the earth and you can see them in the rocks. The Devrent scenery is breathtaking. Remember to have your camera to hand, as this is the only place where you can see such unusual formations as these. to Gulshahir from Nevshahir, there is a rock mass beside the road on the right. Its name is Achiksarai, which means open palace in English. The dining rooms, chapels and monk cells were all perfectly carved one above the other into the outer layer of the rock. As you can see, it resembles a building. The internal decoration of a Chiksarai is like a painting by a surrealist artist. In the past, Gulshahir was the centre of a large Christian colony. The most important church at that time in the area was the Church of St John, built in the 13th century. The church, which has two floors, is not only in good condition, but also has the best frescoes of the region as well.
got to the most exciting part of the region, that is, the underground cities. In Cappadocia, there are 36 underground cities that were dug into the soft pumice stone. The best known underground cities are at Kaimakla, Derinkriu, Tatlaram and Uzkanak. The exact date of the foundation of the underground cities isn't known, but according to the Greek historian Xenophon Anabasis, the underground cities have been inhabited since the 5th century BC. It is believed that these cities were used by the Hittites. They were all used by the Christians of the 7th century who were fleeing from persecution. They sheltered from the iconoclast strife of Byzantium as well as Arab and other invasions in these safe and well-hidden metropolises. A complete and self-sufficient environment, these underground cities included rooms for grain storage, stables, bathrooms, sleeping chambers, kitchens, wine stores and air shafts. The air shafts keep the temperature in the cities at between 10 and 15 degrees, making both the summer and winter quite comfortable. known as Perestrama in classical times, is to the east of Aksarai. The Melanes River has eroded the 14-kilometre valley into an impressive canyon. The Alara Valley is ready to welcome you into its embrace. This way, you can experience the combination of the phenomena of nature, man, history and art. steps down the 100 meter canyon. Monks dug out about 100 churches into the steep sides of both sides of the canyon. Most of the churches were created in the 11th century. Some of the best known churches that are open to the public are Eritash Church, the Church that Smells, the Perenli Seki Church, the Church Under the Trees, the Church of Snakes, the Church of Hyacinths and Directly Church. The pictures that decorate the churches are frescoes which were very popular in Cappadocia and were later thought to be influenced by the Italian style of art and decoration. Even though many have been spoiled, the frescoes of the Alara Valley are still bright and vigorous. However, in the frescoes of the valley, the human physiognomy is foregrounded, and these characteristics of colour and technique characterise the style as being contemporary with the Byzantine style of art.
Under the influence of Byzantian art, the pictures are placed in the church according to the importance of the chosen theme. For example, Christ, Mary and the angels are placed on the domes and apses which are considered to be the most sacred parts of a church. The Alara Valley is rich in nature, and after visiting here, you find that you leave some of yourself. After Ilara, we come to the Soanla Valley. Soanla, in the Kayseri region, contains the small village of Yeshulhasar. The valley is about 25 kilometers long. In addition to its superb natural beauty, Soanla is also famous for its churches hewn out of the rock. The most important churches are the Church of the Black Head, the Church of the Dome, the Church of the Snake, and the Church of the Board. Soanla is also known for its donkeys and dolls. Most of the villagers earn their living by making dolls. Watching women making dolls and then buying one is an unforgettable experience for anyone. Of course, if you want to see everything, then you'll need to see Cappadocia by balloon. This is an altogether different adventure.
Apart from this, you can take long walks or hire a bicycle. And naturally, in the country of nice horses, horse riding can be an enjoyable experience. The most important handicraft of the region is the rug. Hundreds of years of culture are expressed in the knots of the rug. Also, there are onyx shops, which are characteristic of the region. Here, you can see life being given to stone. The pottery shops in Cappadocia are unusual and fun. Not only the masters, but also the visitors make their own pots. Sunset in the Red Valley. Sit and watch the splendor of this breathtakingly beautiful event. The deep reds of this evening spectacle are best enjoyed in peace and tranquility. Cappadocia. In this region, geology and history have mixed to become a kind of fairy tale. Cappadocia is a magical place where people not only dug out underground cities and made churches in the rocks, but an Ottoman sultan turned a village into a city. And here, in an underground restaurant, while you are watching the folk dances, you can reflect about your own fairy tale and share in the richness of this country. <laughs>